Welcome, my name is Gordon Heath. I'm the professor of Christian history here at McMaster Divinity College, and I'm joined with Dr. Victor Shepard, the professor of theology at Tyndale University College and Seminary from Toronto. And we're glad to have you here at our conference, and we're glad that you've taken the time to have this brief interview on issues related to Luther and post-Christendom. And so my first question is, uh, you love to teach about Luther. You're passionate about him. What is it that drives you to, to, uh, to teach him and to be so passionate about Luther? I think, first of all, Luther's discernment of the gospel, his recovery of the gospel in his own time, and his articulation of theology for every time. On the one hand, uh, Luther certainly uh, unsilted the gospel in the period of late medieval and early modernity. On the other hand, his articulation of the gospel is something that goes on and on or is read and appropriated even today. Few people realize that there are more books published about Luther every year, including this year, than there are books published about Jesus. Now, Luther is simply... Uh, fathomless. You never get to the bottom of them. I also relish his courage. Luther showed remarkable courage in defying and challenging the most powerful institution in the 16th century, and I think he has much to help us with there. Everybody knows something of Luther's uh, earthiness. Some people find it somewhat off-putting, but as a matter of fact, Luther was gloriously life-affirming, and I think his down-to-earth life affirmation is something in him that makes my heart sing as well. Not least, though, is his love of the church and, never to be forgotten, his love of children. Luther delighted in children as few other people appear to have. Take us back 500 years to the 16th century, uh, the life of, or the life and times of, of Luther and other reformers like Calvin and Zwingli and others. What's going on? What is, what is driving these reformers, in particular Luther, to, to, to start a, a reform movement within the church initially? Well, there, uh, there, there was a reform movement under the, underway in the church 50 years before Luther. We call it the Catholic Reformation, not to be confused with the Counter-Reformation that began later after Luther. Uh, the Reformation, the Catholic Reformation, identified institutional abuses and ethical abuses in the church and attempted to address them. Luther, of course, wanted to do that as well. But Luther felt that the gospel had been silted over and there had to be uh, a rewriting of doctrine. And no remedying of institutional abuse or moral abuse is going to repristinate doctrine. And therefore, the Luther's, Lutheran, uh, Luther's Reformation has far more to do with the recovery of a, a theology whose substance is the gospel. Reformation theology at bottom is always Christology. And uh, Luther wanted to do that in the first place. That's 500 years ago. Luther lived in the world of Christendom. It's this period between the medieval and the early modern or modern period, a time of transition we live in the 21st century. We live in a world very different. Well, we live in a continent that's very different, a time very different. Uh, Christendom is, is waning. How does Luther's message, his life, his reforms speak to our experience today? What, what do we have to learn from Luther? I don't think we can write Luther off just because he lived 500 years ago. I always distinguish in my classes between the human condition and the human situation. The human situation changes from era to era. There was a human situation in antiquity, then in the Middle Ages, then in early modernity, the Renaissance, mm -hmm. and then in the Age of Reason, and then, of course, in postmodernism. And how people understand themselves, at what level, how they speak of themselves and describe themselves varies from era to era with these paradigm shifts. That's the human situation. The human condition, on the other hand, is much deeper and much profounder. And the human condition at bottom has to do with our situation uh, before God, our alienation from Him, our alienation from each other, our self-alienation, our self-contradiction, our uh, seemingly inability to get beyond war-making and hostility. And the human condition is addressed by the gospel. 
We wouldn't use Luther's vocabulary in every case, but the substantive issues that he addresses are the substantive issues of the human condition which are deeper than the human situation. That's why I think Luther is always fresh. Final question. Where can somebody start? Somebody doesn't really know about Luther. They, they watch this interview. They say, I'd like to learn more about this guy, Luther. Where, where could someone start with, to learn about him? I think there is uh, uh, no end of, of more popular books. I haven't brought any uh, with me. But, but gosh, if anybody wants an introduction to Luther, I will supply free of charge my own book on Luther. Just write me at my uh, email. My website is uh, Victor Shepherd, one word, victorshepherd.ca. Get in touch with me, and I'll provide you with the right introduction to Luther. Super. Okay, thank you. And thank you for uh, being with us and uh, watching this video. Thank you.